Здравствуйте. Hello and welcome to Russian language class. Before moving on, let's have a quick recap of the topics that we learned in the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed about the passive participles. Passive participles in the present tense as well as in the past tense. So let's look at some of the examples where the passive participle present and past participle passive have been used. Какие картины вы смотрели в этом музее? So which paintings did you look at in this museum? Мы смотрели все картины, показываемые в этом музее. So we saw all the paintings which are being shown in this museum. So here as you can see this participle, the passive participle denotes the present tense. So that is why we are using present participle passive. If you change this sentence in a complex sentence uh, with the word katori, how will you do that? Miss Matheli Pse Karchini Katoriya Pakazi Vayut Vata Muse. So Katoriya Pakazi Vayut, which means the sentence is in the present tense. So that is why we are using present participle passive. Pakazi Vayme. And how do we form the present participle passive? Present participle passive are generally formed from the first person plural number by adding the adjectival ending e and e kratke. So, pakazi vat, pakazi vayam and pakazi vayami. Now, let us move on to the past participle passive. A kaku iknigis kazal vam pripada vachal. So, about which book your teacher told you. Pripadavachal skazal nama knige na pisa nai achim aftaram. The teacher told us about the book which was written by this author. So, here the action is in the past tense that is why we are using past participle passive. So, if we again I mean change the sentence in a complex sentence using katori, how will we do that? Pripadavachal skazal nama knige katoruyu napisal etat after. So, in that case if we are using katori then we will use katoruyu because it depends on the verb of the subordinate clause. So, katoruyu napisal etat after. So, this was about the passive participle. So, now we will start the topic that we are going to discuss in this lesson. Today we will talk about the short forms of passive participles. So, let me first mention here that while present participles or the active participles they do not have short forms they only have full forms, but the passive participles have short forms as well as full forms. So, how do we use them that we have to discuss. So, here I have written a full form of a passive participle atkriti, atkriti magazine, open shop and magazine atkrit, the shop is open. So, here as you can see we have used the short form of the passive participle atkriti, atkriti magazine and magazine atkrit. So, what is the difference between their use that we will discuss later on. So, let us first find out how are they formed. So, how do we form the short forms of the passive participles. Passive participles have present participle passive and past participle passive. The short forms are derived are formed from present participle passive as well as the past participle passive. From past participle passive for example, napi sanni, how do we form the short form? You have to just drop na, i and e kratke. So, basically if there are two n, you have to drop one n 
and the ending. So, we get napisan. So, napisan is the masculine form. It has feminine, neuter and plural forms too. Napisan, napisana, napisana and napisane. So, here as you can see there are four forms depending on the gender and number. For masculine we have napisan, for feminine we have napisana, for neuter we have napisana and for plural we have napisane. Similarly, atkriti which is again a passive participle past, we have atkrit, what do we do? We just remove the ending, the adjectival ending that we had added while forming the passive participle, just remove that ending and you will get the masculine form atkrit, add a to get its feminine form atkrita, atkrita add o to get its neuter form and add e to get its plural form. So, if it has the ending te, e and e kratke, you have to remove e and e kratke to get its masculine form and if it ends with na, na, e and e kratke, then you have to drop one na, e and e kratke. So, now the thing is I have already told you that the passive participles or the short forms of passive participles are also derived from the present participle passive. For example, lubimi, lubimi is the present participle passive. So, from present participle passives also short forms are derived. For example, lubim, lubima, lubima and lubimi. So, these are four forms. Although we must have been uh, mention it here that the short forms from the present participle passive are very rarely used. Let us discuss some examples. The first example I have written here is Universitetska Biblioteka Atkrita the Vasmi Chisof. Universitetska Biblioteka Atkrita the Vasmi Chisof. The university library is open till 8 o'clock. After the, we use the genitive case, that is why we have used vasmi from vosim, 8. And biblioteka, which is a feminine gender noun, we have used the feminine form of the short form of participle atkrit atkrita. The next example is mistaf pirvam ridu ushe zanati. The places or seats in the first row is already taken. Seats in the first row are already taken. Mistaf pirvam ridu ushe zaniti. Here mista is in the plural form, that is why we are using the plural form of the passive participle past, which is zaniti. So, apart from this rule, we must mention that if the past participle passive ends with yoni. So, if it has an ending yoni, then the stress is different from the root word or from the passive participle. For example, here as you can see napisanni has stress on e. The same way in all the short forms the stress is on e only, but if a passive participle passed ends with yoni, then the stress changes that we will discuss later on. We were talking about the formation and stress on the short form of passive participles. So, where do we put stress in the short form of passive participles and during the course of discussion, I have told you that if the passive participles has the ending yonni, then the stress changes in the short forms of the passive participle. But if the passive participle has the ending other than yonni, the short forms will have the stress on the same syllable 
as in the passive participle as in the full form of passive participle for example prachitanni as you can see e here is stressed and in all the short forms that we have written here masculine feminine neuter and plural the stress is on e so basically the stress is on the same syllable as the full form of passive participle but if we talk about the passive participle rishyonni the stress is on yo the second syllable the same stress has been carried forward in the masculine form but when we come to the feminine neuter and plural the stress changes so here a is stressed rishina rishino rishinni as you can see the stress has changed to the last syllable so here the last syllable is stressed here again the last syllable is stressed and here also the last syllable is stressed so this is about the stress pattern in the short forms of the passive participle now regarding the formation one more important thing i need to mention that there are some exceptions like the verb vidic and slishech in which the short forms of the participles are derived from the infinitive form of the imperfective aspect for example vidic is imperfective slishech is imperfective so the short forms are derived from the infinitive forms of the imperfective aspect of the verbs so from vidit we form vijan vidna vidna and vidni so these are the short forms of the participle from the verb vidit and from slishet slishin slishna slishna and slishni so these are the short forms formed from vidit and slishet so now let's discuss about the functions of the short forms of passive participle so how does it function in a sentence so what are the grammatical function of a short form of passive participle so for this purpose i have written a sentence with the full form of the passive participle and then i have written a sentence with the short form so let's discuss them one by one मै प्रचिताली सी अपेस्मा नपी सन्नीय नाशी मी ध्रुजिया मी सो वी रेड ऑल द लेटर्स विच वर रिटन बाय आर फ्रेंड्स सो हियर वी आर यूजिंग द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ द पैसिव पार्टिसिपल पास्ट पार्टिसिपल पैसिव फ्रॉम नपिसाज वी फॉर्म द पास्ट पार्टिसिपल पैसिव नपी सन्नी सो हियर एज यू कैन सी दिस नपी सन्नीय it qualifies the noun pisma so it is working it's it is functioning as an attribute to the noun or like an adjective so here the full form of the past participle passive functions as an attribute or it functions as an adjective now let's move on to the next sentence se pisma bali na pisanni so all the letters were written but here when we use the short form short form here is not qualifying any noun here but it is functioning as a predicate so this is the difference between the grammatical functions they perform full form of passive participles functions as attributes whereas the short forms they function as predicate so this was about the functions of short forms and full forms so we were discussing the functions of short form of passive participles past participle passive one of the functions of the short forms of past passive participle is also that they denote the result of an action in the present past and future tense so they can denote the result of an action in present tense 
in past tense as well as in future tense. So let's look at the examples. Se dama pastro eni. So all the houses are made or all the houses are constructed. Se dama bili pastro eni. So all the houses were constructed. So here this denotes the action in the present tense, the result of an action in the present tense and here this is again the resultant of an action in the past tense and se dama budut pastro eni. So all the houses will be constructed. So here the result of an action is denoted in the future tense. So this is one of the functions that the short forms of passive participle perform. Now one more important point here is you can replace the full form of passive participles past or past participles passive with the short forms of the same participle using the word katori. So how do we do that? Let us look at the example. Ya chitayu pismo pris lanne muni atsom. So here as you can see we have used the full form of the past participle passive pris lanne. So I am reading the letter which was sent to me by my father. So here we are using the full form. So now if you have to replace the full form with the short form how do we do that? Ya chitayu pismo katore bila so here as you can see we are using the short form along with the word katori in the proper form or in the appropriate form and rest of the things remains the same. So ya chitayu pismo katore bala prislanna. So which was sent to me by my father. So prislanna, prislanna, why prislanna because it is related to katore and katore it denotes or it qualifies or it indicates pismo that is which is in the neuter gender that is why katore is also in the neuter gender and prislanna is also in the neuter gender. So this is how we replace the full form with the short form. So this was about the short forms of past participle passive and during the course we have also seen that the short forms can also be formed from the present participle passive but their occurrence or their frequency is very rare. So they are not used as frequently in the speech as past participle passive. So now we will move on to our next topic. The next topic we have is active and passive constructions in Russian. So there are some constructions which are active and how do we change them into passive constructions? This is what we are going to learn today. So the active within the active constructions we have categorized into three categories or three different constructions and then we have changed them into the passive constructions. And how do we do that? That we will be discussing in this part. So the first construction, active construction is with the imperfective aspects of verb. So if you come across an active construction with the imperfective aspect of verb, how do you change the construction into passive? So for that let us look at the first example. Uchyoniya rishayut etu problem. The scientists they solve this problem. So here as you can see rishat is the imperfective aspect of the verb and the second example we have is abhichna etu bukvu nichitayut. Usually this letter is not read or not pronounced. In these two sentences we can see that the verbs are in the imperfective aspect of the verbs. So now if we come across such examples of active construction how do we change them into passive. So if 
there is an imperfective aspect of a verb used in the active construction you have to change the verb into reflexive verb and how do we change the verb into reflexive we add the particle sya at the end so rishayut will change into rishatsa so rishat rishatsa this is the reflexive verb from the verb rishat similarly from the verb chitaj chitatsa and now you can use them in the passive construction and how do we change the active construction into passive we bring the object first so here in the active construction what is the object object is etu problemu so we'll bring it in the beginning eta problema so now this will be the subject or this will function as the subject eta problema rishayatsa uchyonmi why uchyonmi because we have done that uchyonmi is in the instrumental case the performer of the action is always put in the form of instrumental case so that is why we have changed uchyoni into uchyonmi so eta problema rishayatsa uchyonmi this is the passive construction of the same active construction uchyoni rishayat etu problem so this problem is being solved by scientists the next example was abichna etu bhukvu ni chetayut usually this letter is not pronounced so how do we change this sentence into passive construction abichna eta bhukva the same way as we have done in the first sentence will bring the object in the beginning so eta bhukva nichitayatsa abichna eta bhukva nichitayatsa so here you have to bring the object into beginning and use the verb which is the reflexive of the verb which was used in the active construction so from chitaj we have changed chitaj into chitatsa which is the reflexive verb and then you have to use accordingly depending on the number of the subject here subject is the function of subject is being performed by the object in the active construction so abichna eta bhukva nichita etsa so this is how we change the active construction into passive when the active construction is with the imperfective aspect of the verb so now the second type of active construction is with perfective aspect of a verb so in the first part we have seen we have learned that the active construction with the imperfective verbs they are convert or change into passive by using the reflexive verb so now the situation is different now we are learning how to convert the active construction into passive when the active construction has the perfective aspect of a verb for example studenti pasmatreli etu prezentatsi pasmatrech as we already know is the perfective aspect of the verb smatrech to look or to watch so how do we convert or change this active construction into passive by using the short form of the participle so from pasmatrech what short of form of passive participle we derive pasmotrana to at the presentatsya bila pasmatrena studentami so here it will not be studenti but studentami why studentami we have already discussed then whenever we denote the performer of an action then we put the noun into instrumental case so at the presentatsya bila pasmotrena studentami the third active construction is with the word katori so the third type of active construction with the word katori how do we change this active construction into passive by using the full form of the passive participle let's look at the example mai chitali knigu katori vi nam kupili so we read the book which you bought for us so here mai chitali knigu katoru yu 
ve nam kupili. So, here we are using the word katori and the verb which is the savishinni or the perfective aspect of the verb. So, now we have to change this construction into passive. How do we do that? We, I have already told you that we will use the full form of the passive participle. So, from kupich, what passive participle do we form? Kuplinni. So, we will use kuplinni in the passive construction. So, how do we do that? Mi chitali knigu kuplinnu yu nam vami. So, we read the book which was bought by you for us. So, here why we are using kuplinnu yu? Because kuplinnu yu qualifies the noun knigu which is in the accusative case and the gender is feminine. That is why we have kept the form of kuplinni as kuplinnu yu. The accusative case feminine gender and singular number. So, these are the rules to change the active constructions into passive. Let me repeat them once again. The first active construction is with the imperfective aspect of a verb. How do we change the active constructions with the imperfective aspect of the verb? We will change the verb into reflexive by adding the particle sya and then we will bring the object into, into the beginning and then use the reflexive verb and this is how we change the active into passive. The second, second type of active construction was with the perfective aspect of a verb. So, how do we change the active construction with the perfective aspect of a verb? We use the short form of passive participle and the third one with the word katori. So, if the active construction has the word katori, then we use the full form of the passive participle to change the active into passive. Since we have already discussed the rules of changing active constructions into passive, let us try to practice the rules by using short forms of passive participles and converting the active construction into passive. The first sentence that I have written here is in the active voice or active construction. Raman Yevgeny Yanegin Napisal A S Pushkin. The novel Yevgeny Yanegin was written by the author's name is A S Pushkin. Or if you change the word order, A S Pushkin. Napisal Raman Yevgeny Anegin. A. S. Pushkin wrote the novel Yevgeny Anegin. So, this is the active construction. So, how can we use the short form of past participle passive and change the same sentence into passive? Let us do that. Raman Yevgeny Anegin will napisan A. S. Pushkinim. So, here as you can see we are using the short form of the past participle passive napisanni. So, from napisanni we form napisan which is the short form and we are using it to change the active construction into passive. So, Raman Yevgeny Anigan will napisan as pushkinim and pushkin you have to change the form of the noun into instrumental case because it is the performer of the action. Next example is Sculpturu David Sozdal Italianski Sculptor. Sculpturu David, the sculpture which is called David, was built or made by Italian sculptor. So, now again, this is the active construction. You just change the word order and it will be clear to you. Italianski sculptor Sozdal Sculpturu David. So, this is the subject, object, and verb. So, now how do you change this active construction into passive using the short form of the passive participle derived from this verb? 
sculptura da vit bil sozdan italianskim sculptaram sculptura da vit bil sozdan italianskim sculptaram so the sculptura da vit bil sozdan here we are using the short form of passive participle past of the verb sazdach and what passive participle do we derive from this verb sozdanni and from sozdanni we form the short form sozdan so bil sozdan italianskim sculptaram the next is stieni fu gastinai pakrasili fu galuboi tsvet so here this is an impersonal sentence there is no subject mentioned here so that is why the verb is in the third person plural number stieni fu gastinai the walls in the guest room was painted in sky blue color so how will you change again this active construction into passive by using the short form of past participle passive formed from the verb pakrasit so what past participle passive do we form from this verb pakrashinni and from pakrashinni the short form is pakrashin pakrashina pakrashina and pakrashini stieni fu gastina in bali pakrashini fu galuboi tsvet so here again we are using the short form of the past participle passive the next sentence next example we have is etat sluchi dabno zabili again this is an impersonal sentence this incident was forgotten long back so how will you again this is an active construction so how will you change the active construction into passive by using the past participle passive derived from this verb zabit etat sluchi dabnu bil zabit zabit is the past short form of the past participle passive which has been formed from the verb zabit to forget and the last example we have is ya zapisal tui telephone knishku i noted down your phone number in the book or a small book tui telephone bil zapisan munoi knishku here munoi comes from the subject ya so here subject has been put in the form of instrumental case because it's the performer of the action and toy telephone has come in the beginning toy telephone bil zapisan so zapisan is derived from the verb zapisat and it is the short form of zapisanni which is the full form of the past participle passive so this is about use of short forms of past participle passive while changing the direct constructions active constructions into passive so this is all we have and by this by the conclusion of this topic i conclude the lesson here and this is the end of our course i hope you enjoyed this course please keep revising the lessons please do your assignments and do the exercises given in the lessons so thank you spasiba dasvidaniya